we're excited. We're just a few days away. Can't wait to get started. Give me a thumbs up when you have your sound. Good. Everybody else good? All right. Sounds good. Thank you.
All fairgoers will walk through this new weapons detection system as you enter the state fair. You will also notice a new private security provider at the entry gates. Andy Frayne Services has joined the fair's safety and security efforts. We look forward to partnering with this best-in-class organization to provide security screening at our gates and in key areas of the fairgrounds. Last month, the fair announced the implementation of an after 5 p.m. minors policy. During the 2023 State Fair of Texas, starting at 5 p.m. daily, all minors aged 17 and under must be accompanied by a parent, guardian, or chaperone that is 21 years of age or older when entering the fair. Parents, guardians, or chaperones may accompany no more than six minors 17 years of age and under. The State Fair will require all accompanying parents, guardians, and chaperones 21 years or older to present a valid ID upon entry starting at 5 p.m. daily. Once inside the fairgrounds, the parent, guardian, or chaperone is not required to remain with the minors. However, the State Fair encourages that they stay in communication with each other and are aware of their location on the fairgrounds during their visit. For more information on this new policy and other State Fair related questions, please visit bigtext.com slash know before you go. We are largely an outdoor event. Approximately 80% of the State Fair is held in outdoor settings. Please be aware of the weather forecast and come prepared. As we do every year, we ask that everyone be fair aware. If you see something that doesn't look right on the fairgrounds, please say something. Tell a member of law enforcement, a state fair safety team member, or anyone wearing an official state fair of Texas polo. Let's all do our part to keep the fair safe. The Alertus mass notification system the fair installed ahead of the 2022 fair is still in place to warn people throughout the fairgrounds of in inclement weather, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me, fairgrounds of inclement weather or other potential critical incidents. If you hear an alert come over the fairground sound system while visiting, please take it seriously and follow its prompts. If you are hoping to attend when there are less people on the fairgrounds, consider attending on a weekday instead of a weekend. Weekdays traditionally are much less crowded than weekends and attending on a weekday provides you with many discount admission offers. Go to bigtext.com slash discounts to see the list of available discounts this year. In addition, opening weekend, this weekend, is historically less crowder than, crowded than future weekends. Please use hand sanitizer and wash your hands frequently. We will have more than 500 hand sanitizing stations placed throughout the fairgrounds for the public use. And there are hand sanitizing stations placed throughout the livestock barns and livestock areas where it's especially important to wash your hands after visiting the animals. As it relates to iconic college football games during the fair, we are excited to welcome back our long-standing traditions of the State Fair Classic this weekend and the All-State Red River Rivalry next weekend at the State Fair of Texas. Cotton Bowl Stadium follows NFL policy as it pertains to clear bag admittance. If you are attending a game in the Cotton Bowl, please visit bigtext.com slash football to see details on the clear bag policy and what is prohibited inside the stadium. Now, turning our attention to ride safety, I would like to invite Rusty Fitzgerald, Senior Vice President of Midway Operations to the podium to tell us about the fair's ride safety standards. Howdy, folks. I've been lucky enough to be taking care of the State Fair of Midway for the last 23 years, and it's been a lot of fun. On the Midway this year, we're going to have about 75 rides. There's going to be three new rides out there. One's called the Infinity, the Toy Cars, and the Kitty Bumper Boats. So we're going to have a little bit of something for everyone. The state of Texas requires that each amusement ride gets inspected one time a year by a third party independent inspector. At the fair, we go above and beyond what the state requires. Right now on the Midway, we have six inspectors that are going through the rides from top to bottom. We actually had some up in Minnesota, uh, different fairs that we sent in inspectors up there to inspect even before they got here, but they're gonna be re-inspected here on the grounds. 
Something you may not know is that we have an independent midway. And that means that we have the ability to go out and pick the very best rides, the very best operators to come to our fair. A lot of fairs just bring in a carnival and they're stuck with what they do, but we, we're independent and we hand pick everything that comes in. So come on out and have a great year at the fair. We're going to let you have fun out there, and, and uh, we'll see you out there. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you, Rusty. As you enter and walk throughout the fairgrounds, you are going to encounter many of our Dallas DISD and DART police officers, as well as Dallas Fire Rescue Team members, who are here to ensure the safety of all of our fairgoers, vendors, staff, and volunteers. As an added layer of safety, the State Fair of Texas introduced the State Fair Safety Team to the fair a few years ago. The safety team works closely with the Dallas Police Department to ensure a safe environment during the fair. In addition, the State Fair Safety Team serves as State Fair Ambassadors, assisting guests on their visit to the fair as an extension of our regular guest services operations. I would now like to invite Deputy Chief Tina Schultz from the Dallas Police Department to speak to our safety and security efforts leading up to and during this year's fair. Following Deputy Chief Schultz, we invite Battalion Chief Scott Klumpner with Dallas Fire Rescue, Chief Charles Cato with DART Police, and Chief John Lawton with Dallas ISD Police to the podium if they have any additional remarks they'd like to make. It is a privilege to work with all of your departments, and we thank you for helping keep a safe and secure environment here at the fair. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Chris has said, uh, this is going to be actually my third year as the commander of the State Fair. I'm super excited, but what I'm more excited about is the, the folks that are joining me. They are previous uh, DPD commanders and a boss as well, so it's going to be a great, great uh, collaboration with everybody. We've worked together for many, many years, so I'm excited to be joining forces with these guys again. Um, before I start this, I want to make sure that I, I thank my tactical planning team. They spent about eight or nine months preparing for the State Fair, so I would be remiss if I didn't thank them in front of everybody. So the Dallas Police Department has partnered with the State Fair for decades, as in past years, early discussions begin for our security preparations. Meetings are held with the State Fair Management Security Director, reti retired Dallas Police Chief Jeff Cotner, who I enjoy working with the last, well, actually all three of my fairs, as well as adding to Dallas and Fire Rescue this year. Some of the things we discussed were police issues, weather issues, and medical emergencies in order to make sure that we provide a safe and fun environment for all the attendees as well as the employees of the State Fair. When you come out to the State Fair, you're going to see uniformed officers throughout the fair. That's going to, like, like Chris has said, it's going to include DPD, DISD, DART, the state troopers, as well as some other agencies. And we couldn't do that without the other agency support. So there's a lot of folks that aren't here, but we want to thank them for that as well. That makes a fa fair safe for you. Our officers are going to be serving different functions in addition to the security uh, team provided by the state fair. And you will also see at times we'll have a heavier presence with our Dallas Independent District when they're going to be providing on source. Uh, on school resources when the school when the kids have their school days. We will continue our daily conversations with Security Director Jeff Cotner with any upcoming events that, that occur outside of the State Fair as well inside the State Fair and we can make adjustments as we go. In previous years we've worked well together and we've made those adjustments as necessary. We definitely want you to enjoy your time at the State Fair so I'm going to pass along a few safety tips that will help you and help your time here. Um, one of the things that Chris also mentioned is if you see something suspicious say something. There are many folks on the, the State Fair grounds that can be a resource to you, let them know, and they'll get to the right resources to make sure that we take care of those issues. One of the things that we see every year is we have missing children. So one of the things we ask people to do is to make sure you take a picture of your child using your smartphone. That way, if you do become separated from your child, and it will happen, somebody's going to miss a child just because of the number of people at the State Fair, it helps us as law enforcement, as well as the security team, locate that child and reunite, reunite the families together. Um, Another thing we saw last year is we did see a separation of our elderly adults, whether they needed physical or uh, medical, additional medical assistance. And so we asked that with adults too, is take a picture of them and make sure that when you guys become separated, you have that picture again to help us. Make sure you find a designated area in case you become separated from your party. Alcohol is going to be sold at the state bar, so please, please drink responsibly. And before you enter the fair, ensure that your vehicle is locked and secure all your belongings. As typical with the State Fair, the traffic is heavy around 30. So we're going to ask you to provide yourself extra time, especially on the weekends, because the traffic is going to be backed up. We have traffic officers out there that are going to get you inside the fair as quick as possible, but there is going to be a backup. 
And we are also asking anyone who's going to visit the State Fair to make sure that you use the Haskell exit, which is exit 48A off of Interstate 30. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Scott Klumpner. I'm the Section Chief of Emergency Medical Services for Dallas Fire Rescue. Dallas Fire Rescue is proud to partner with the State Fair for the first time to provide emergency services throughout the fair. We will have paramedics on site uh, with various means of treating and transporting patients if the need arises. We don't want to see anyone have an emergency, but I want everyone to feel confident that if they do, DFR will have paramedics to take care of you and make sure that you receive the best treatment possible. Um, so some of the resources we're going to have out here, we are going to have bike paramedics uh, that will be able to navigate throughout the fair quickly. Uh, we will have a miniature uh, enclosed ambulance that will be able to provide uh, pri patient privacy. If somebody has a medical emergency, we can put them in a climate controlled environment and move them away from the activities. And then we will also be providing transport from the fair to hospitals if needed. So we have a diverse group of resources and personnel out here to serve, and we will be upstaffing, especially during uh, both of the football games that were referenced. And uh, we do have a partner, Cedar Hill Fire Department, providing some additional support with an AM bus during uh, the Texas OU game. First of all, good morning. I am uh, Chief of Police John Lawton with the Dallas ISD Police Department. Uh, I'm very appreciative of the relationship that we have with the State Fair of Texas. Um, we are an integral part of the safety program uh, that is here. Uh, we will have, we know that October 12th and 13th, uh, that is the day that's been set aside for DISD or schools. And we will have staff that will be here supporting um, as the chief of the department, uh, it's really important for us to be out here because we know during those days we have a lot of our kids that are out here. And because of the relationship that we have built with our kids, uh, that gives us the opportunity to work with them and maybe even deter some things from happening because they have that relationship with our officers and we can easily deter them from doing certain things. But what I will ask is that uh, you understand that after 5 o'clock on any given day, um, they must be accompanied uh, by somebody uh, 18 years or older. And, and with that, uh, 21, uh, with that being the age, um, we're just asking that you be uh, uh, cognizant of where your children are and what they're doing. And uh, let's make it a safe. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Charlie Cato, the Chief of Police and the Emergency Manager for the Dallas Area Rapid Transit. Uh, I want to thank the State Fair leadership team for having us here, for inviting us here, allowing us to participate. <clears throat> we recognize that the State Fair is a, is a tremendous event for a, a very beneficial event for the whole North Texas region, and it is for DART as well, so we, we're prepared uh, to assist in moving people in the most effective and efficient way into and out of the fair. We're going to have uh, trains, extra trains, extra buses, especially those, those high special event, high travel special event days. And we're committed uh, to being good partners. As Chief Schultz said, we've worked together a long time. I've known her since she was a young police officer. And, and watching her grow to where she's at today is, is very, very inspiring to me and helps me out. So uh, to know that we did something right, uh, we grew some leaders there, some Christian leaders. And so I'm excited uh, for the start of the fair and to get us through it because. I come out here and get my, uh, my corn dog on as well as everybody else. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your service and thank you for everything you do to not only keep everyone here at the State Fair of Texas safe, but what you all do in the community every single day to keep everybody safe. Um, the officers that work this event have a collective passion for the fair. And so as you see them walking around the fair and enjoying yourselves, please talk to them. And they love to interact. And this is a great community initiative for them as well. We're just so grateful for all that y'all do. Um, your ticket to the fair is your ticket to Texas-sized fun at the most Texan place on earth. With hundreds of events included with the price of admission, you get an all-access pass to free entertainment when you come out to the State Fair of Texas. This year's fair runs this Friday, September 29th, through Sunday, October 22nd. At this time, we would like to open it up for any questions that you might have for any of us. Yes. How many officers do you guys have um, on the grounds on any given day? 
Chong. Chief Chong. So just due to the security measures, we don't tell you how many officers, but just know that the State Fair is well staffed inside and outside with our, with our resources. And um, in the new rules for minors, it was mentioned that an adult is, is needed to be present to come into the fair. Correct. But they are not required to stay with those minors. Correct. In what ways will the fair make sure that, you know, once they're inside, that those minors are either, you know, being accompanied or being looked after or, you know, not We will have um, at the gate, you know, when you enter, that's really, it's the entry point at five o'clock and beyond, is that we want to make sure that they are coming in with an adult and to come and enjoy the fair. Once they're inside, they do not have to stay together. We do ask that they stay in touch, you know, but there's not a way that we can verify that. Um, we will continue with every year as keeping a safe environment with our partners to ensure that everybody is safe out here during their visit. Yes, they will be turned away if they do not have a guardian, parent, or chaperone 21 years or older with them. And on that new minor policy, too, um, what, can you talk a little bit about kind of what went into making that policy? Why, why the decision was kind of put in place? Yeah, it's something we've actually been considering for several years now. A lot of fairs and events across the nation have implemented similar policies. Even different venues in Dallas have similar policies. Um, and this is just another step that we feel we should take to create a safe environment out here. We want everybody to be able to come out and enjoy this, the State Fair of Texas. But different incidents that happen throughout the country, um, an incident that happened here last year, we want to ensure that people are out here to have a good time and a safe time. And this is a family friendly environment. And so we want to curate that and create that. And we feel that this policy is just another way that we can help create that family friendly environment. And Chris, is there any way to enforce, like for those minors who are at the fair, let's say at three o'clock without an adult, that they wouldn't stay until nine? I mean, is that being enforced at all? Or is it strictly about entry after five? It is strictly about entry after five. So if you're already in the grounds ahead of that, you're fine. A question other? for Officer Schultz, yes. if you wouldn't mind. Um, Chief Schultz. Obviously, staffing problems have been an issue for police departments across the country and for some time now, but I'm curious how you all have adjusted staffing uh, to accommodate fair safety while also keeping the rest of Dallas safe at the same time, sort of diverting resources here uh, and making sure the neighborhoods around the area yeah, so, so great question, so thank you for that. Um, one of the things that we had to do in the past years is we do use outside resources to help staff inside the fair, but I also continually work with, especially the divisions that are impacted, would be our central division as well as our southeast. And so we work together at the staffing network in a pool, and there are overtime resources and additional resources that are pulled in for those things and using other special resources to offset the on-duty uh, patrol resources. And one more question. We've had a, a couple of shootings in the area, particularly in South Dallas, in the last week or so. Has that changed the strategy for fair safety at all? Do you consider those those events as you're sort of planning and, and strategizing for fair safety? So as we plan for this every year, those are things that we consider. We do look at the crime trends that are happening in the Southeast Central Division as well as what's going on across the country. So even if an event hasn't happened, we plan for an event to happen. Um, we do things with tabletops with fire and other agencies to make sure that if something does happen, we all know what that desired responses for us as a staff. But yeah, we definitely pay attention to those and I do work well with the Southeast uh, Deputy Chief as well as the Central Deputy Chief. And uh, on the new weapons detectors, that, uh, is that gonna be a situation where people are gonna have to like take their keys out of their pocket and everything or is this, uh, is this work a little bit more high tech? This is more high tech. This is going to be where you won't have to take your phone out of your pocket. You won't have to you know, put your bag down. This is going to read through all of that. Um, this is the latest and greatest technology when it comes to detection. We're really looking, we're looking for weapons. And so this is going to be able to detect any of that as people walk through it. Yes, it's pretty high tech. And you're welcome after we're done. If y'all want to come check it out and test it, y'all are welcome to do so. And I wanted to add on to what Chief Schultz said about the, you know, pulling from resources. One of the reasons we started the safety, State Fair safety team a few years ago was to assist in that manner and create our own safety team here that works in partnership with DPD and our other agencies in order to help relieve um, some of that need to pull on those resources as well. Any other questions? 
All right. Well, this concludes our press conference for today. We're here if you all have any questions, any interviews that you need, if you want to come test things. The, get, the new guest code of conduct that will be on display at the gates is right here for you all to see as well. We just appreciate all that you all do to help spread the news of the State Fair and help us have an incredible fundraiser this year. So thank you for everything.